Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 27th episode of Tissues of the Day, a comedy show about queer culture and relationships. I'm your host, David, and I'm joined once again by my intrepid co-host, Robert. <laughs> Did the mic work? I didn't hear you at all just now. Yeah, I just made a sound. Did you hear it? Uh, I think so. Can you make the sound one more time? Robert. Oh, beautiful. Okay. <laughs> Maybe it'll show up in the recording, but yeah, I didn't hear it. Literally, all I heard was... <laughs> like it was so. Do you want that one too? I can name. <laughs> Today's episode YouTube's. is about hookups. We're talking uh, casual. Let me uh, cut. <laughs> We're talking casual sex, yeah. one night stands, yeah. and how to get more out of them, Ooh. and how to get more into them. Into them. Oh, I knew that was coming. <sighs> As we get started, remember there is a video version of the podcast on the BitButton YouTube channel and audio wherever you get podcasts if you're watching this right now. We are supported by our lovely Patreon subscribers, Vicky and Elias. You can join them on patreon.com slash bitbutton. So to start, Robert, what is your very general, just very brief overall experience level with hookups? Oh gosh, well, David, I couldn't have come with a set decor like this scented candles and we're talking neroli mm -hmm. and patchouli kind of mm -hmm. scent an instrument flowers sitting on an iron <laughs> if things weren't gonna get steamy okay a very thematic iron right i also brought moisturizer and moisturizer. tissue sure. in, case, yeah. <laughs> in case things get really intimate but my general approach is like this set it is about it is bench. fake it is <laughs> performative it is musky no. it is fake and it's short-lived <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah no i'm sorry uh, i didn't mean to talk over you <laughs> no 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 um it is it, honestly it is, there is that element of sensuality and sexuality it hookups for me are the step above masturbation you know, like things are better with another individual or more, no matter what you're into. Mm -hmm. um, and I, for the most part, have used it as a means of exploring my sexuality, my the, the, the activities of sex and the intimacy, like my connection to sex and emotions, like how those how tight, tight how tightly tied those are to each other. Mm -hmm. And we can get into that more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and part of it is just kind of bestial, basal, like you just want to get off mm -hmm. sometimes. It's that easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about you, David? Um, same. I relate a lot. You know, hookups are not meant to be a deep experience of another person, but it can be a very deep experience, like just for yourself, just on mm -hmm. kind of a selfish level, right? Mm -hmm. Like you learn more about your own sexuality through hookups and you learn mm -hmm. more about what you want and need um so that's kind argue of for that it's like a bit of a sex like an exploration of the depth of sex not necessarily of intimacy or another person yeah sex if that makes sense yeah yeah because sex on like on its own is very fun and complicated and like kind of technical sometimes and like you can just <laughs> you can get <laughs> Yeah, There's you can just work some David. stuff out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, you know, I have about a five-page uh, introductory um, text that I usually send to people. Be like, okay, so this is like what works. This is what not works. Uh, please, please, please read press this. button five, yeah. two, and eight. Yeah, it's my um, what do you call my green skittles test? Have you ever heard about that? No. Go on. So there's um. Uh, I think it was maybe Metallica or something who had a rider for any of the venues that they were touring at. And I think they called it something like the green Skittles or the green M&M's test. So they had this long rider where included in that was something like, please remove all green M&M's from our like snack lineup. Yeah, yeah. And the point of that was if they get into their dressing room or their um, whatever, the green room, mm -hmm. and they see that all the green Skittles are removed from that bowl, that mm -hmm. then means that all of the other items in their rider were taken care of. Um, uh. And it actually becomes a safety thing because they had had issues where like a, 
a venue wasn't rated for the amount of electricity that they were going to need and they started an electrical fire and that's like a major major problem for them so anyway Oof. that's like just a fun tidbit wow. and uh that's in my sex manual. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> because I start electrical fires. <laughs> he sure does. He's that he's that electric in bed. Hang on. Hang on. Uh anyway, so you know, that's kind of like the overall for both of us. Now, Robert, hmm. just pie in the sky. What is the ideal hookup? And how do you cope with disappointment if you don't necessarily get that? Yeah. Okay. So part one of that would be the part ideal. one. <laughs> yeah, part one of a six-part series that we're going to explore, <laughs> and it'll be narrated by David Attenborough. Um, <laughs> for me, the ideal is that there is a level of trust and security um, that you're entering into enough to feel like hooking up with that individual is going to be fine, and you're not going to feel uncomfortable, endangered, or you know, insecure. I think also that it like both people just kind of like enjoy themselves. <laughs> you know, like there's definitely plenty of hookups where I haven't, where I feel it feels very lopsided. Like one person's got what they want, but the other person didn't, namely myself. Um, mm-hmm. And I think, you know, like I, de- like I can get into details of like what I like in a hookup, but you know, I definitely want it to kind of parallel my kinks and my interest and my aggressiveness level and my, um, yeah, what, what, what letting go can be, you know, and that can be anywhere from like a 10 to a hundred. And, you know, I generally want it at least over a 50. Um, yeah. Otherwise I'm, I'm definitely not going back for more. And yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, it's just kind of that safety, that release, that mutual enjoyment and, that it's not complicated, that it doesn't have to be like, it, there doesn't have to be a lot of like back and forth, that there doesn't have to be a lot of like pretense or like just flakiness. Like we all hate the fucking flake. Yeah. Oh my God. Don't be a croissant, you know, dial down the flake. <laughs> yeah. Be a bagel. <laughs> be a dry ass bagel. <laughs> a nice hole in it. <laughs> yeah. Nice but, and rubbery. <laughs> yeah, ooh, um, that, yeah. We, you know, you want it because if each party knows what they're getting, they should know that it doesn't need to be complicated and it doesn't need to have like just all that flakiness and that non-committal and that complexity. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, I'll jump in and then we could talk about disappointment after that. But like, mm. yeah, for me, the ideal I think is very similar. Um, yeah, it's that sense of safety, that sense of like open communication. Honestly, like. Just the sense that when you bring stuff up, the other person isn't shutting down or changing the subject or like yeah. laughing off what you were saying. Cause at the end of the day, like, you know, sex is like one of the most vulnerable things people can do with each other. And you want mm-hmm. to at least be able to talk about it both before and after. So it's like, if, yeah, you're getting a weird vibe as their communication style, that's like a huge red flag for me. And then mm-hmm. really just parroting all the things that you said, uh, you know, don't like flakiness don't like um what was it yeah that sense of like not mutual enjoyment uh and yeah we can get into details about any of that stuff but it really is Mm -hmm. yeah it really is those things that you said so what about disappointment robert like how do you uh how do you deal oh there's such a range of disappointment if it's like a light disappointment like this was just not a good encounter but it was a decent enough person all I know is that I'll be like, I won't be messaging him again. I won't like, they might come back and ask for like, Hey, you know, like want to meet up again. And I'll just be like, no, sorry. I'm, you know, like just, I, I don't want to play games and I don't want to lead them on. And I also don't want to, uh, I want to say like placate them or, you know, tell them like, Oh, maybe or possibly and just string them on because I don't have balls enough to say, mm-hmm. uh, no, you know, it was one was good enough or I didn't enjoy it and it wasn't right for me. That's OK to say. I think people much rather hear that than drag it out over a 30 to minute to half an hour conversation. Yeah, I agree. So it's just like non-return, just upfront. No, thanks. I'm good. Um, and sometimes I've, I've told I've told people like, hey, we're going to stop this or I'm going to head out because they they were not being very reciprocal they weren't being understanding they they were breaking trust 
um, or they were just being super selfish. Mm-hmm. And I've there's times where I've just been like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> we just finished. Nice. That. Good for yeah. you. Yeah, I still yeah. haven't had one of those yet, you know, but I've had plenty of the like. They're in the minority. Like I, yeah. I'm I'm a crowd placer, so let me say it. It's the minority. <laughs> Mm-hmm. crowd Ooh, i shouldn't have used the term crowd <laughs> this context. yeah 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 i'm a real what do you call i'm a real go-getter uh anyway <laughs> team the, player yeah Take yeah one for the team yeah disappointment like you said it can cover so many things right like you can be disappointed in the sex itself you can be disappointed in how it ended or like how they communicated afterward um because like you said you know and I'll get into this when we talk about jealousy, but like, um, yeah, that ambiguity afterwards, like I'm real big on clarity. If, if that hasn't been completely obvious <laughs> over the course of this podcast. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, I remember after a hookup once I was like, you know, feeling a little mixed about, uh, how it ended. So I said something like, Oh, I hope I wasn't too submissive at the end. Um, I had a really nice time, something like that. And then, uh, the guy responded like, thanks. I had a really great night. I was like, okay, all right, I'll take him at his word. Um, but then later I, uh, like, I don't know, maybe a week later I sent a text just seeing like if he was still in town, um, and he didn't respond. So that for me was just like, why, why, like, why not just say you're busy or why not say the next day? Like, oh, sorry. I thought I replied to this, like something. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. That to me was like a huge red flag where I was just like, okay, like maybe that was casual for them, but you can be casual and be clear, you know? Yeah. Um, so, you know, that was disappointing in some sense because I was like, okay, it seems like there's some communication yeah. issue here that will not be fun for me if I pursue this. So I, yeah. But, and I also think that. that like, the world of hookup culture is replete with disappointment. There's mm-hmm. a lot of like, because it's so surface level quick. Yeah. Um, and there's so little in terms of expectations around those, two, those two individuals mm-hmm. that it's just, you're kind of like stabbing in the dark, mm-hmm. uh, a very dark hole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, and as, but in this case, you're going to miss so many times, right? And a miss yeah. in terms of like the sex, in terms of the personality, in terms of the person, in terms of the, like the intimacy, like there's going to be so many misses because you don't know what you're stabbing at. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's why I was disappointed because I think I got the sense when we hooked up the first time that, you know, he wanted some kind of like open communication, like seemed to want to be able to talk about sex more openly with somebody. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm totally happy to do that. But like, I'll still go kind of slow as far as what I experiment with myself. But like, I'm happy Mm -hmm. to, I like talking. So into it. Um, So that's why it was so confusing then when he stopped talking. I digress. Uh, So I want to transition to uh, some questions from a book called Pleasure Activism by Adrienne Ooh. Marie Brown, which is lovely. Uh, Adrienne Marie Brown is the editor and like kind of overarching writer I'm for the book. Class my cardigan for this one. <laughs> <laughs> and overall, the book is great. It collects a bunch of writings from uh, black feminist activists who talk about the importance of pleasure as a tool in fighting systemic issues like patriarchy, anti-blackness, um, you know, ableism, etc. cetera. Uh, and there's a chapter in the book where they talk about casual sex. It's like just a kind of group circle interview where everyone ch- chimes in to answer some questions. <laughs> Dude, and in that, be careful what? how you said a group circle thing in context of the conversation <laughs> of sex. <laughs> and, it's like, yeah, yeah. What and so there's a group circle read? where everybody just takes turns <laughs> talking uh, <laughs> I, I must and, oh, oh, yes go on okay. yeah. mm-hmm. and in that chapter they have these four questions that they bring up as a tool for people to use when they are thinking about what they want out of casual sex so i thought it would be fun for robert and i to go through these and just like yeah, that's talk funny. about just the stuff you know, more of the nitty gritty for like, Mm -hmm. why, Mm -hmm. why casual sex? Why hookups? Right. Cause like, I mean, that is the, (laughs) that is the ultimate question. Why? (laughs) But 
Uh, yeah, so let's get into it. So question number one, Robert, uh, in casual sex, what are your desires? <laughs> <sighs> I think it is to find my desires. Uh-huh. I think that is what the desire is. Um, okay. So do you mean desire in terms of another person physically or desire experience like for yourself? Experientially. So what do okay. I want out of casual sex? What do I want out of sex in general? Um, mm -hmm. It is a platform for exploring that. Trying different personality types, different body types, different, um, uh, you know, like features, different um, just types of people. Um, different in sexual kinks and exploration and, and just trying different things out. Um, that is my biggest desire out of it. Outside of just the exploratory part of it, I do want a level of trust. There are certain things like, you know, like there's a lot, and I don't want to say lack of trust, but like sort of anonymity or less knowing um, has its own kink factor and some people are into it. And I have it to an extent, but for the most part, when it comes to myself and especially my own home i definitely want to have a trust factor up front you know i want to know the person yeah. i have certain like minimum requirements and practices that i do um i also desire somebody who's really kind of like open because like i'm a kinkster and i like you know my own nastiness in that and so i want to find somebody who is willing to explore that however i do know and i'm very aware of that you will never get the same level of depth of sexual experience especially in the space of kink with somebody who you've met once yep. maybe twice like it requires trust and security so that's something i find it i've generally for myself i found through partners or somebody who is more like that friends with benefits like it's like an ongoing thing um because you need to build that trust otherwise you're just like it's just too quick and casual. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, and we will definitely touch on the friends with benefits thing uh, mm -hmm. very shortly. Um, as far as desires for me, yeah, it really, you know, I'll be honest. And like, there are definitely nights where like, you just don't want to sleep alone kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which Human connection. Yeah. Yeah. Which is tricky because, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, it can be really tricky <laughs> to like actually kind of luck into feeling comfortable sleeping next to somebody like after sex, after like the whole nine yards of like chatting and like having some tea, whatever else. <laughs> when you actually <laughs> fall asleep. You tea during your hookups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, welcome oh, my oh. home. <laughs> Condoms and loops are there. <laughs> yeah. over here. Oolong. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, long. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think beyond just the desire for like a warm body is like a lot of the things that you were saying as well is like what and what we said before is learning about our own sexual desires, learning about our own like what gets us going. Because uh, there's a great poem actually in Pleasure Activism that basically says like. Before you let anybody touch you, make sure you know how to touch yourself kind of thing, mm. uh, which I think is really lovely because it's like if you know what gets you off, then like, you know how to get that from other people or, you know, yeah. like, when you're not getting it, etc. So my next question, uh, what is the motivation for doing this? What is the motivation <laughs> for chasing your desires? Oh. That's basically a why question. <laughs> I mean, part of it is just straight up sexual satisfaction. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, like just like you like that, that like, yes, we can throw the flowery language into it. And, and the, you know, it's about human intimacy and connection and that like, that's the depth of it, but it, it, you boil it down and it comes to like, yeah. you want to have sexual encounter and get off because you biologically are wired to want it for sure. Um, my motivation also is exploration. Mm -hmm. like exploration and that, you know, the kind of talking about the desire piece of like, just, um, trying a lot of different things. You know, you go to the buffet and you don't just eat the one thing over and over and over. You try a few different things to figure out what you like. So exploration, sexual satisfaction, other motivators for me is, um, I think it's to understand myself better, mm -hmm. you know, like to understand, like you kind of have this image of what you are in a partnership 
right? And even though it's casual sex, I think by encountering different people on a sexual and intimate level, which ultimately a partnership often comes with, you know, there are some asexual individuals out there, but I think it's a chance to test the waters and and understand what you want in that longer term thing. Uh, who knows if you'll ever get it, especially because we're talking casual stuff, it's almost guaranteed mm-hmm. to end, but it's just like, oh, well, if I like, you know, a bit of this from person A and a bit of this from person C and a bit of this from person F, and I can find a person who's A, C, and F together, I'm good, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah that's that's definitely some of me. What about you? Um, Yeah, very similar, right? Because it's the, you know, pleasure is a motivator, right? Like, we are biological organisms that are, like, trained to, like, seek pleasure and avoid pain, and yeah. it's very, like... Yeah, just at our root, I think most people are trying to do that. Um, You know, maybe a deeper question is like, is there something I am avoiding by seeking this kind of pleasure versus like other kinds of pleasure? Um, Ooh, that's a question. Yeah, which I do think about quite a bit uh, as far as looking at hookups. And I think... The reality is, like, I'm not really ready for commitment. I can't remember if I've said this on the podcast, but, like, uh, I am at the very least bi curious. I haven't been with a woman sexually, but, like, I'm not going to settle down with somebody until that has happened. Mm -hmm. I will just always have that question until, you know, I sort of explore that. Until I explore that. Um, So, by the way, David has an eject button beside his bed. That's how (laughs) non-committal. <laughs> yeah, 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 them exactly. out of his house. yeah. I was telling Robert off mic, I need to replace this bed frame, not because I ruined it, but because I may ruin it uh-huh, <laughs> if it doesn't uh-huh. if it doesn't get repaired or replaced. He's not um, getting his deposit back. Yeah, that place. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, exploration, like you said, like mm-hmm. there is an amount of exploration that you can do as like a solo person just like wanting what you want and then after a certain point there is the exploration of depth that you can get when you are in a more committed thing Mm -hmm. like you were saying that trust that more technical aspect of like kink and role play or whatever else right um what are the rituals that you want to incorporate or like to incorporate in casual sex in casual sex um Definitely, like, I'm t- <laughs> I'm kind of torn on this one because, like, I mentioned the, like, ritual of um, trust building. So trust building is one of that first things where I get to know the person I want to know that they're not just, like, because for me, I've, I've had people I've talked to, right, be it a nap or in person, who they're so shorthand. They're so... Um, dull in their conversation like it's so like one word replies in that and i'm like i know you're beyond hookup you're the person who's like messaging eight different people and using short answers so you can fit, fit, find out of those eight which one's going to get to you fastest mm-hmm. so you're going to be a wham bam thank you ma'am and out kind of person i'm like Mm-mm. so i want to build that trust and i want to know that there's some level of trust in terms of like this is a decent human but also that like i trust them enough to really be intimate and explore kink and explore things that I know I'm interested in because I'm not a vanilla person. <laughs> I'm not a quick wham bam person. I need more build up than that. Yeah. Then the next factor is like into a ritual would be like um just some level of hey, how's your day? Like like I just I don't it like it does happen. It has happened where I'm like walk through the door and immediately we start going at it, but it is in the minority. Mm-hmm. Um and so for the most part, I want to have like some sort of chat and that and eventually you're just like, hey, let's do this. Fine. Go to it. And then so that's kind of like the that's a, a bit of, you know, just the like intro. And then I would say foreplay if it is straight to the meat of the yeah. potatoes, yeah. then I'm just like, OK, fine. But like I need build up. I need titillation. I need like foreplay. It's so important. You hear more of this stereotypically, I think, from the female identifying people out there in the world who are, you know, this like, I need my foreplay. But I agree. Regardless mm-hmm. of it, who you are, what gender you are, it is like, you've got to have, like, something to get the juices flowing. Just don't break open the dam. Right? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. No, and that uh, that is almost a safety thing in many ways, right? Like, 
um, there are some shitty tops in the world who will literally just try to like jam an asshole like without lube, like without any pre cum. Like they they really don't care. Um, and or even me- bottoms. There's bottoms who go wait right to the meat of it, and and it's too much. Right. And I'm just like, oh, you just wait, really? That's all you want? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's just like whatever (laughs) like they're totally allowed to want that but (laughs) like i i agree with you i tend to prefer foreplay um yeah cool were there was there anything else or can i go the end part so i would say like depending on the day and the situation i usually say this up front like if i'm forget i'm short on time i'll be like i have until four and if it's like 3 30 or something and kind of wrapping up i'll just be like okay you know thanks for coming over you can leave if they draw out their time or like overstay their welcome like it is that's where i feel like i might be a bit of a dick but i'm just like i'm sorry but this this was a short-term casual encounter i probably told you when i need to be done by i usually do um and let's move on because we know what this is yeah you know like that's that's pretty simple in my mind uh i don't want to be a dick like i'm a good person again i'm cloud crowd pleaser so i will go to each guy around the circle (laughs) (laughs) i will i will still try to be kind about it but i will ultimately be like okay this is done and yeah. like we can always message more, we can always like call whatever. But I'm like, right now we're done. Fair, fair. Uh, rituals for me would be, su- yeah, super similar. <laughs> we're very similar, Robert. <laughs> we're so compatible. what's the deal? <laughs> um, because yeah, it's the same thing. I like to know that there's some personality there. I had a very strong realization that I. Uh, you know, if I don't find the person attractive or if I don't find them charming in some way, I won't get into it. Like, I don't enjoy talking to them. I, I'm not going to, like, use them for sex. I just really, it just feels like nothing to me. And yeah, I just don't like that. Um, At that point, you know, I would just masturbate. Like, I would get way more out of that. Mm-hmm. Um, So that's a huge part of my ritual is just, like, getting a feel for the person. Um. So like hand in hand with that is meeting away from my house. Like I don't really like giving my address, at least at this point, I've just moved to a new place. I'm still kind of settling in, but yeah, if I can meet them at a cafe or like near a train station or whatever, and just like walk and talk for a little bit, even that is like great Mm. for my comfort level. And it's also then safer to cancel um because they don't know where i live <laughs> like it's yeah, it's a yeah. whole thing um, see, i go i go a step further than you in that mm-hmm. case um i will tell them like here's where i live and, and but i won't give them my unit and my floor and that i will say a, a minimum i'll just be like here's the building yeah and they'll come down and i'll see them because i just want a minimum like visual confirmation of who they are and that they don't have like like a something behind their back <laughs> or something you know like <laughs> i just want to be able to confirm that they are and then i'll yeah. go up so I've I've had those, but I've just never been like straight up like, come on over, doors unlocked. I have mm-hmm. a mask on. Like the, the like some people, cool. That is your kink. That is your thing. I would do that at someone else's house. Never in my own abode. Never. Yeah, yeah. Because I wonder if it's a little bit of my like whatever my pansexuality is like. I very much get attracted to people's personalities, and so mm. I'm trying to get a sense of their personality literally in person as opposed to like just the text stuff. And yeah. so I wonder, yeah, if there's just a big part of me that's m- very attracted to that. And so if they do have some charm, like I was saying, I will pick up on that and be like, okay, I'm feeling like more comfortable with this person because in recent memory, like the one time when I went over to somebody's place and I got a bit of a weird vibe over text, but like I thought their pictures were cute. So I was a little torn about it. And then I show up at their place, start talking to them, realize they have a horrible personality <laughs> and oh, no. i was just like oh no but like yeah but they're cute i'm so conflicted now <laughs> so it was just this like yeah i realized how important that was to me kind of in that moment that was a very big learning um yeah and then there's you know more basic rituals of like you know did i eat well am i hydrated did i sleep well am i in mm. kind of an anxious headspace i don't mm. feel very comfortable like sleeping with people if i'm in an anxious mindset so i have canceled every once in a while when Mm. like i made a plan or made a date and i'd be like actually i don't feel that great today 
I, I don't think this is going to happen. Um, Cause yeah, there's just something about to me. Yeah. We can get into this later as well, but there's something about um, emotionally attuned sex that is still really powerful and like really important, but that has to be like with a person that you trust in my opinion, not with a stranger. Mm -hmm. I feel yeah. like that's a very slippery slope uh, with a stranger. Cause you don't know how they're going to react um, if you yeah. start yeah being real about emotions all right yeah. so lastly robert what do you need to feel safer we kind of touched upon it yeah yeah we did uh for safety i want to see a picture i want to know a meeting <laughs> yeah there's so many blank profiles uh, i've had people have sent me clearly fake collected photos um, people who have sent me super Photoshop stuff, blurred out stuff, you know, it's like, you know, it's just the body or it's like the face, but it's super obscured. And I'm just like, mm -mm, no, I like eyes are the windows to the soul. And I need to see a bit of your soul before I see the rest of you. you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I need a picture. I need some level of dialogue, trust building. Um, I need, if I say anything in the space of like, ow, not that, slow down, don't do that, and they don't respond to it, I'll excuse one or two in like times. But if I feel that they're not responding to my like flags, basically, mm -hmm. then I'll just be like, okay, stop. Like, yep. you're not, you're not, you're not um, trusting me, listening to me, believing me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Unless, again, there's always, like, side things. They're, like, people who explore kink where it's all about saying no, but they actually mean yes. And mm -hmm. that's a whole other thing and very consent-based. But um, I think for the most part, it's just, yeah, if they're breaking those, like, factors of, like, just not listening. Yep. And, ugh. and then um, in other terms of other safety things. Uh, that if I mention, like, I don't always have protected sex, you know, I um, do sometimes and do don't other times, you know, it depends on, again, <laughs> trust and safety. But if for whatever reason I put forward the concept of it and they shut it down, they're like, no, I don't want to. Then I'd be like, then no. Yeah. You know, like you're, you're not, you're not respecting me. Um, um yeah, it's the most immediate stuff I can think of right now. What yeah, you? that's fair. Uh, same. I think those are great. Those are both really big ones. Um, yeah. Respecting your nose or like, yeah, that something is painful or whatever. Um, let's see. Is there anything really else that I can think of? Oh, I mean, I don't know if I've said this on the podcast, but like, I just don't handle insults well at all. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So if someone's thing is like being degrading or like making kind of shitty jokes or like shitty comments, even if it's like just about themselves, uh, that makes me very, very uncomfortable because um, mm. I am just whatever. Either I'm either I'm too sensitive or I'm like just such a believer in positivity uh, that yeah, just, just cutting humor, all of that stuff to me feels like really like dangerous. Like I just don't like it. Um, yeah. So that's a big one. If someone's making kind of like rude remarks, even like before we're naked, um, yeah. I start to get like really sick to my stomach. Uh, yeah. Cause like, yeah, I I don't know. I know some people okay, are okay. Can into I that. can I dive deeper on this one? Are you Please. are you willing to go a little deeper? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey oh, uh, <laughs> there's so many of these moments. Uh, <laughs> one, I think it's because like you and I, we're both like very emotionally attuned, empathetic people, and and so like your state of emotion really impacts sex. You we have yeah. a, I think a stronger tie to sex and emotion than maybe the average person. Yeah. I think also that. Um, for somebody like you, when you put yourself into a vulnerable space, if you were to get a person who in is a vulnerable, vulnerable, <laughs> yes, I, I, I learned the good English. Uh, I'm in England. I came here to learn. Yeah. Um, if you're in a very vulnerable space for you, anything that starts to trip that up, question that or, or break that, I think is partly, partly why you're still opening up to being 
you know, like in a new relationship, right? And yeah. you're still exploring yourself in that. So it's like you go into a very vulnerable space. If anyone messes with that vulnerability, you get really thrown off. But here's the thing I'm curious about. Mm -hmm. Do you like in the space of degradation, you know, that's outside of the sexual space. Do you enjoy it in the sexual space where it's like, because some people are very much about being degraded during sex because it's part of their kink. I think <sighs> that that's what's that's something I'm definitely learning about still. I think yeah. I am learning. I uh, really like being submissive, um, but it's I think because I like the feeling of being cared for, not mm. because I like the feeling of being like degraded or made small or like you know yes being like shit on sometimes literally uh, <laughs> but like <laughs> that's on your profile no nope, on yeah. me please yeah yeah please <laughs> um so yeah so i think until maybe there's more healing there or more mm. just like comfort built up with that aspect of being submissive there may be somewhere like a year maybe from now where yeah. i will feel more secure with things like being more degraded and uh, whatever insulted um, or yeah, just like deprecating humor and stuff. But yeah, at least right now it's, it's not the thing. It's like a huge boner killer. Uh, yeah, Cause yeah. it's just like, yeah, it's just why. And it's also because just point blank, like I'm in still a pretty uncertain space in life. I'm not very financially mm -hmm. secure. I'm still adjusting to a new job. I don't have benefits yet. Like it's yeah, like yeah, a whole yeah, yeah. thing of concerns. So I don't really want to throw into that. Uh, yeah. Frustrating sexual experiences at the moment. Totally. I just, I, I need a lot of validation right now. So and I think I there's a key distinction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think there's a key distinction in that like, um, submissiveness doesn't have to be degradation. Right. Because I think like degradation is like often it is about like putting somebody down or maybe belittling them. But submissiveness can all be about like giving, giving, giving and like being like a caretaker of somebody in a way or just being like releasing yourself. And it's interesting because like I like a level of submissiveness. Um, I'm not super submissive, but I like a level of it because as a very A type person, to be able to release responsibility and power and mm -hmm. control in the bedroom is just so hot to me. It's so great because like, it's a chance for me to let go of the stuff I normally have control over. Yeah. But, um, as a verse person, I like also seeing that in another person. And so it's like a bit of a, sh a give and take of like that mm -hmm. submissive quality, especially when I'm topping. I find like, I really enjoy somebody who is submissive in that, but I also like doing it. And that's a part of what I'm still exploring. And I'm yeah. still figuring out like, what do I prefer overall? What I think it's really coming down to is I'm realizing it's just chemistry with a person. It's like, there's certain mm -hmm. people I, you know, like them to be more submissive versus I like to be more submissive too. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I'll tell you about an experience related to this off mic because <laughs> it was so it was so recent and uh, yeah. Hold I on, just, I'm gonna line up all the guys to listen yeah. on this one. Go on, grumpy <laughs> mushroom, little acorn. Yeah. <laughs> Are those the toads from the forest? <laughs> yes, and like this one has a bum. Ah, uh, <laughs> I can't see it, but the viewer can. can see, oh, the proper, the so proper camera can see it. Wow. Okay, uh, almost wrapped up with our questions. So that was our little segment related to pleasure activism. I highly recommend the book if, uh, yeah, this subject interests you. Now, Robert, have you ever hooked up with somebody who had traits you were jealous of? Mm, of course. <laughs> of course. Um, bodies. Mm -hmm. I've slept with people with objectively nicer bodies to less nice bodies on my own and it's always the person who's got the nicer body then of course i'm jealous of it mm -hmm. slash turned on it i had slash kind of confused by it at times i'm like how mm -hmm. do you have time to get to this point <laughs> you know like mm -hmm. how, what what casual life do you have that you can just dedicate this much to a gym um so definitely that um, there's been scenarios that I've been like, in terms of endowment, I've been like, oh, you're big. And I'm like, I wish, mm -hmm. but I really have come to a comfortable place with my own get up and, and, you know, like I, yeah, I just, 
I don't know. I think it is it's the classic, like, it's not the size of the ship. It's the the way it you know, rocks the water or whatever. <laughs> you know, like, it's, I'm really not. It's late for me here. I like that um, one. <laughs> Uh, I, I, you know, I mean, this like, is quoting, uh, Amr Khan from our gut, butt penis episode. He says, it's not the, it's not the pen. It's the penmanship. Yeah. Yeah. That's much better. <laughs> way, way more succinct. Um, but I definitely, there have been some pens. I'm like, well, damn, I wish I had a pen like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like, mm-hmm. So, but that is also part of the exploration. The stuff that I'm like, oh, I'm discovering that like, sometimes that's oh, too much. And like, that doesn't work for me. And it's not necessarily about size. Sometimes it's shape. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's, you know, like you know, a curve, no curve, like, you know, bigger on one end and smaller on the other end. Like all those different factors come together. And yeah. it's again, while you explore the smorgasbord of D, mm-hmm. um, but so that I've been jealous of. Um, one thing, <laughs> one thing I have not been jealous of. I know I'm throwing this the other way, but Ooh, it's I just like been this. around yeah. stamina. Okay. Like I find I'm like a person who kind of has just a lot of like energy for it. Okay. Now, once I'm done, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm very impressed slash jealous of people who are, like, can go multiple times one after the other. And I'm like, mm-hmm. that's a different kind of stamina. I can like hold out one session for a long time, but I'm like the people who can do back to back to back. I'm just like, how oh, you do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. I don't have that either. Um, where it's like, yeah, I'm both like, pretty sensitive so like i can finish pretty quickly uh i'm like way into edging so if i find somebody who's like into that yeah Yeah. like that's gonna be a major like area of play but then like yeah it takes a lot of work to go even a second time and i haven't really been with anybody who yeah goes multiple times um but yeah i would agree with you i'd be like whoa (laughs) like where's that coming from (laughs) yeah totally i'm always just like were you installed with a larger capacity like yeah. <laughs> container? Did yeah, you like I don't, <laughs> I don't I just don't follow. <laughs> yeah, I'm always uh, so impressed. What other things do you get jealous of? Hold on, I need to I need to get my snacks while you talk about this. Yeah, one. yeah please. Are those mm, tomatoes? Mm, mango. Oh mango. mango. Uh I want juicy fruit for this juicy goss. <laughs> I definitely Definitely. I think I mentioned before there was someone I was with recently where I got like pretty jealous of their body. And I was just like, oh, that's like almost the ideal like that I'm striving for. Like not especially huge, but just like toned and definitely obvious that they worked out. Um, So that was I don't know. That was just a trip. I was like, here it is, like right here in the flesh. This is not a picture. This is not like a movie. This is just this person. (laughs) Um, and I realized like how rare it was that I was even next to somebody or like touching somebody like with those traits that, uh, Mm -hmm. I was so like admir admiring of. Um, so yeah, so I, I don't really know what to do with that, but I will mention like a trait of anxious attachment is idealizing other people and then like downplaying my own like positive qualities so mm-hmm. like uh i had to really catch that in myself for the next like week or so because you know i was spiraling a little bit because the person wasn't very responsive to text and i was like oh is there something wrong with me like did they were they really not into it um are, am i not attractive to them like all of that stuff and ultimately i don't know I don't know why they weren't communicative. Right. Mm -hmm. And I can't really assume any of that. Um, But it's very interesting how that space of like admiration, like, and yeah, there's like a spectrum of like admiration to then jealousy to then like self doubt and all of that. Right. That's Uh, a downward spiral. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So, you know, it, uh, we, whatever, just as, like men who are into men, like that's just something that we have to deal with where it's like the stuff that we idealize or may someday want for ourselves. Um, we may not get for ourselves. Can we enjoy it when it's like somebody close to us that still has that thing? 
Um, yeah, and it's what you said earlier of like, you have to get pretty comfortable in your own skin to be able to like enjoy what somebody else has, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. And to realize also that like, it's about that full package. So like yeah. you, for example, and I had something, I had a different version of what you had. Um, you know, you might have that person who has a really good physique and you're mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm kind of jealous that I'm lucky that I kind of get access to this thing. I only see in like Sears underwear catalog. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, uh, then you find out that like, oh, they're a horrible communicator or, oh, they're kind of a dick or, oh, they're not actually that great in bed. Yeah. You know, they might have like great look in that. And I had a scenario where like this was this guy who was like really nice chatting and doing like the build up and getting to know him came over really good conversationalist. We had like professional alignment and stuff. Um, it was just gorgeous body, just <laughs> like amazing. It was very good in bed. Um, it was good. It ended off well on that. And then he became not the person who didn't stop responding in a way, almost worse became the person who was always like, Oh yeah, we should do this again. Oh, we should do this again. Oh, you know, later, maybe later. I'm busy this weekend. And it just became the delayer. The delayer to yeah. the point where I was like, I get it. This was a one-time thing. You could have said that a month ago. Yeah. And so I have, Yikes. I don't know what's worse. Is the person who's just kind of a dick or the person who's trying to be nice and not say no? I think they're equally bad. Yeah. For yeah. I think that's reasons. an even tie <laughs> for, <laughs> for different reasons. <laughs> And wow. It's happened to me several times. And that's why I, as a person, try not to do it. I just say, like, hey, thanks. Not gonna be another round. Yeah. But you're a good person or whatever. Like, you don't have to make them feel bad, but Yeah, yeah. There is something still slightly insulting about like, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I just I uh I, I double booked, or oh, I'm so sorry, like that I missed this message. And like, if you keep saying sorry. Like, are you just apologizing, like, just for this general dynamic at this point? Like, cause yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. mostly hearing sorry now. Yeah, um, it's not about the instance. It's <laughs> about the, like, thing you don't want to admit. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well said. Um, all right. Big closer. How do you navigate the spectrum of physical to emotional needs with sexuality, Robert? Oh, no, David. <laughs> I am still learning about this. And I think you suffer of this too, and I'm realizing this too, is that I am innately a person who ties more emotion to sex than probably Mm -hmm. the average person. And Mm -hmm. it is problematic in the hookup world. So a great thing you had mentioned that I learned probably in the last two to three years or so is that I do not do well hooking up if I'm in a bad headspace. Mm -hmm. So I think that question of like your motivations or your reasons for why you're seeking hookup sex uh, is very important because there was definitely many times where I did it because I was sad, depressed, anxious, whatever. And it just made it worse because I associate Mm -hmm. emotion to sex um, more so than the average person. And so what would end up happening is like you do it and they leave you and you're like, Oh, They left me just like the person before them left me. They got what they wanted. And I guess I got my wanted, but I didn't really. (laughs) Like It's just like (laughs) all those things just start running through your head. And part of that required growth around sometimes I'm like, sometimes there's dicks in the world. Sometimes they're good dicks in the world. (laughs) The good and the bad. Sometimes there is just, um, you know, like people who like, you know, they will treat it like full blown one time casual stuff and it means nothing more than that and don't take it on it has nothing to do with you uh but that's hard when you associate sex and emotion yeah yeah Mm. yeah i really uh, it just seems like it depends on the day and it depends on the person like how emotionally whatever mixed up i'm gonna end up uh feeling about that experience and i said this to my other friend somewhat recently and i wonder if you relate there seems to be like a sweet spot of like attraction with hookups yeah it's called the g spot hang on yeah yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) the the p spot (laughs) um where okay so let's say on like the very far end over here are the people that like you are not attracted to, you'll probably never sleep with. You just wouldn't really get anything out of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you do end up sleeping with them, like you 
practically forget it as soon as it's over. Like, it's just like, what was that? (laughs) Um, Then I think somewhere in the middle, there is a weird sweet spot of just enough attraction where you enjoy being with that person, um, but you don't want to be with that person forever kind of thing. Like, you don't feel that, like, butterflies in your stomach of, like, holy shit, this person is amazing kind of thing. Um, Mm. And to me, that feels like a pretty safe space for, like, casual sex or, like, hookups. Um, And then on, like, the other extreme end are the people who, like, check all your boxes and, like, they really do seem like a catch. And you're Mm. like, I don't know if I want to just have casual sex with this person. Mm. Like... I like even after a hookup, it, like you get thrown for a loop because it's like, oh my god, like I I I don't know, like this person is just like I I need to see more of them. It's like that whole thing, and I think it's real. Like when you get into that space of this person is great, um, and they only want something casual or like whatever your expectations aren't matching. I think that's when you start getting into that space of like catching feelings you know, feelings not being reciprocated and it just being really difficult. And I think, you know, maybe, maybe there are some people in the world who believe that love is so abundant that they can like catch feelings for someone and not get jealous when they hear that person is still sleeping around casually. And they're just like one, whatever, one agenda item on their schedule. Um, but generally when I'm in that space of like, kind of whatever, catching feelings, head over heels, um, wanting something more with somebody, um, I unfortunately do become like more jealous, more, uh, you know, preoccupied with what that person is doing and like what they're into and whether they're into me. And that's really Mm. hard. And that's an aspect of anxious attachment. Um, but yeah, it is in some ways something that like we all want, like that is an aspect of like falling in love with somebody. So yeah, I wanted to yeah. mention that. Does that make sense the way I frame that? <laughs> totally makes sense. Can I extend a metaphor into this Please thing? Do. I like to think of it almost like if all the guys in the world, including yourself, were going to the carnival and approaching that like hammer hitting the bell thing that goes up and dings. Uh-huh. It's like that arc. And we just happen to be the stronger people in that world. Where we <laughs> have managed to hit that thing. Or if somebody hits our thing... <laughs> at the right angle (laughs) we're gonna go further down that side of the spectrum that side of the arc than the average individual most people just aren't as strong as us because we got a bigger emotional hammer so you hit that thing you hit that spot and we're gonna hit head over to the the like area and that's where i think it is relationship based right like that's like ideally as you get to know a person more and you like them more you both end up in that same spot at the same time what the problem is, is that if one person's further behind, it's misalignment. It's classic misalignment. Mm-hmm. And um, we just happen to be people who can get further into that space quicker. And um, and especially when you associate sex to emotion, to trust. Because what puts that person, like, I don't think there's anyone in the world who could say, like, from meeting a person in a singular encounter, especially something casual, not like a date or something, but just like a hookup or whatever, is going to be like, I've met the perfect person who totally hits that side of the spectrum. Yeah. You know, it's just like, they're like, they're my everything. Cause you have to get to know them emotionally, go through trials and tribulations and laugh about stuff and find common interests in that. Like it takes time. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just, we're doing it faster. And that's where I find for myself that what happens is, is that if I find I'm going down into that space, um, the, um, I had a thought here and losing it now, but like, oh, this is it for me. It's like, you know, you got emotion combined with sex and building trust allows you to go further down that arc. Yeah. And. I find that like the, you know, a casual person, like I have enough control. I've generally like, okay, I like you. You're fun in that, but I'll, I'll end it. I'm good there. But if it gets into a place of like friends with benefits, that gives more opportunity to go further down that route. And what I find is if I get anywhere near that end zone, if I don't see myself dating them, but I'm still having sex with them, 
then I basically cut it off. And yeah. I'm just like, I can't, I have to be a friend with you. I can't keep sleeping with you. And that's what, that's been my pattern. I've noticed mm-hmm. I've had some friends with benefits, but I almost always turn it into just friends or mm-hmm. outright end it. And I'm just like, okay, well, I'm not going to be a friend with you, but I'm enjoying the sex. So this is just a casual hookup and I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. You're saying it kind of ends for both reasons. You're saying you can feel too intensely and, you know, need to talk about it with that person, or you could just feel not very intensely and, you know, still need to end it because you you would rather move on. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. It's kind of like, I might have somebody who's like, you're amazing at sex, but you're a fucking doorknob. So it's Mm -hmm. like the emotional isn't there for me, uh, but the sexual is there and that might keep me going for a bit of time. Mm-hmm. but it won't get me as far as somebody who is like, Oh, I like you like emotionally attached, like, or associate, like aligned with you and mm-hmm. sexually aligned with you. Well, that like can go longer, but it can also get me into that end zone. And so that's where mm-hmm. I find I'm like, if I have both of those factors, but it's still just friends with benefits. Well, I'm just like, I can't be sleeping with my friends. I need you just to be my friend. Like I can't, like I can't, you know, like if you're not in on this and you don't want to date me, but we're this aligned done. Yeah. 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 I get that now. I, I, yeah. Cause that's what you, that's what you're referring to is like, okay, if you're getting that close with somebody, then that becomes the question. Like, should we date? Should we really do this? Um, Yeah. 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 And so to all the people listening who wonder like, God, have David and Robert fucked yet? (laughs) That's why we don't. (laughs) Because we would like skyrocket to that end zone way too fast. You'd just be like, oh, no. (laughs) I wouldn't show up to your house for the anonymous sex. I would show up with a ring. (laughs) As I spill tea all over myself. As Robert spills the tea, I spill the tea. Hey. Um, Wow. Okay. Now... We've gone a little long this episode, uh, but if you're still into it, Robert, we can play an improv game. Let's do it. Okay, let's do it. We have come now to the fun of the show. We're going to do an improv game called uh, Tinder Surprise or Swipe Yes, Swipe No as to not copyright infringe on the uh, the popular uh, smartphone app Tinder. Anyway, the way this game works is uh, we're going to take turns being the swiper and the other person will be random dating profiles as characters that are going to come up uh when we find one that we like or is funny we'll say yes and that person will do a quick scene quick speed date and we'll see how it goes maybe they'll hit it off maybe not um the swiper can be neutral like us as ourselves or as a character and have fun with it um ready robert do you want to swipe or do you want to be characters first i want to swipe okay sounds good Hey, baby, how are you? No. (laughs) (laughs) Meow. Yes. Do you want to play with my little ball of yarn? Ooh, we've got a ball of yarn for me. What color is it? It's neon green. Can you catch it? Oh, toss it over. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Ooh, it's soft. It's soft. And it's got a little, it's got a little slime ball inside. (laughs) Oh, guess I'm going to have to get my fingers in there. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Wow. So are you going to finish your anchovies? Uh, uh, Oh, I I was, but go ahead. (laughs) If you're really (laughs) hungry. Oh, so, um, you, you not from here? I'm just from the alley around the back. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. Uh, now I will swipe and Robert's okay. going to be the the profiles. Hello. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. How's no. it going? Wait, oh. <laughs> Do you like small anime characters? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, well, gosh, go, go, girly. Yes. <laughs> okay. 
Wow. Hey, thanks for meeting me for a walk in the park. This is really lovely. Yeah, I don't get out too much, but I sure love sunny days. Yeah, are you are you okay? Should I walk a little bit slower? Oh, no, I, I'm a strong strapping guy. I'll go from here to the ends of Earth for you. <laughs> That's very sweet. Um, are you a teacher? You have a very, what do you call, youthful energy. Ugh, thanks. You know what? I'm not a teacher, but I like to think that I'm a teacher of life. I'm a park ranger. Oh, oh, wow. Okay, so you must have a lot of opinions on the forest fires and the all of that stuff. Does that yes. upset you? Oh, yeah. You know, I used to be employed, but it's hard to be a park ranger when there's no park. And since the fire of 93, well, I'm just a ranger of ashes. <laughs> Dang. If, okay, so if you could say anything to a person who started these fires, what would you say to them? I would say, get the fuck out of my town. <laughs> okay, cut. Um, all right, I'll do some profiles now. <laughs> what do you want? No. <laughs> Do you want to make some money, man? Do you want to no, get in on this no, deal? No, all sorts of no. I have traveled far and wide, and I have never seen anything quite as exotic as your face. Yes. So where have you last Stop come talking. From? Oh. I have so many questions to ask you. First, <gasps> what is your last name? What is its origins? Mackay, it's Scottish. Did you know it's Scottish? Uh, well, I, I knew it's Scottish when my dad told me. I've been to Scotland. Ooh, how was it? I learned many things in Scotland. Do you want to go there right now in my private jet? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> you have a I'm an jet. explorer billionaire philanthropist, and I love sex, but I'm a terrible listener. What do you <laughs> say, Robert Mackay? Do you want to go places? Well, if I get a lot of Shut up! Stuff get in my play! <laughs> <laughs> get up and get in my plane. <laughs> okay. Should I go um, again? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One more. Okay. Hey there, darling. How's it going? No. <laughs> oh, fuck. Hey. How's it going there? No. David, right? Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> we saw that character. <laughs> Good point. Well, look at that. Tall <laughs> no, he's <dream>. back. <laughs> I'm testing your range. <laughs> Yar! <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! I've been looking for a matey of my ship. Do you think oh. you've got the barnacles? I mean, let's see. I've never been sailing. Uh, I've only been on, like, a couple power boats. Does well, that work? I can teach you a lot about ships if you teach me a lot about power bottoming. <laughs> I mean, that could work. Um, do you... Is your peg leg sanded? <laughs> oh, it's sanded, lubricated, and it also is scented. Wow, scented and sanded. That's lovely. Yes, it um, sells, smells of mermaids and tropical fish. Ooh, ooh. Okay, that's pretty neat. Uh, all right, so uh, to be a uh, matey on your ship, do I have other responsibilities? Am I... Uh, eye candy, what's going on there? Yes, you'll have to swab the poop deck. And you're okay. going to have to batten down the hatches. Well, I would I would do that if I'm bottoming. Are, are, am I swabbing anybody else's poop deck? I'm talking about a ship. What are you talking about? Oh, my bad. I thought, uh, never mind, never mind. Dirty mind. Uh, okay, so I, I could take on some responsibility there. Would um, you mind there... sitting in the crow's nest? We're tight on space. 
Is that a euphemism or is that a... No, it's literally the small little basket made of wood that sits atop of the mast that you use to look out from. It's called the crow's nest, but it's also a euphemism for my bum. Do you want me to sit in your bum? (laughs) 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 Am I putting my butt into your butt? (laughs) I'm into double butting. (laughs) See. Are you into that? <laughs> I like that pirate. I like that pirate a lot. Oh he knew what God. he wanted. He, he did. He was very specific. <laughs> he got you got a mate at it and you taught him about the sexual world. Wow. That brings us to the end of today's mm. show. Robert, what's your takeaway? <sighs> One we, that we're we covered very, so much. Yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> and we have a lot of similarities, a lot of compatibilities. And I think yeah. we learn a lot about this as we go go through life and learn more about each other. Mm-hmm. Um and then I guess second would be is that um the it's just like people need to explore. Like mm-hmm. I, I, this, this subject is so in line with me about the whole no sex before marriage thing. And I'm just like, it just does not make sense to me on so many levels. Cause there's so much you discover that's not just about the sex, it's just about you and your personality and your interests and for your, of yourself and of others. So it's just like, go out there and explore. And if, if you're like, if you have gone into a like relationship you know, you know, that where you haven't had a lot of exploration with others, well then do it with your partner and, you know, hell, maybe even potentially do it with other willing partners. If you have that conversation and have that level of trust and consent with your, with your current partner, you know, it's just like, yeah, go out there and explore a world, see the world of genitalia. Yeah. As a pirate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Mine is somewhat related to that. It's two thoughts. It's like, Sex is adult play, right? Like we, you know, we become close to people. We explore various types of sensations and types of love and companionship and all of that uh, with sex and with like just people. That's like they're called adult toys for a reason. Mm -hmm. Um, And the second thought is... (sighs) Just a, a quote from a song I really love called Aloha by Valley Boy. And it goes, don't it feel like life and death, having fun and having sex? What happens next depends on your reply. I love the song so much. Um, mm-hmm. And it is, yeah, it just kind of sums up all those ups and downs and those feelings that come up related to sexual exploration. Now. Uh, that's it. Bye. No, thank you so much <laughs> for listening to Tissues of the Day. You can follow me, David, at BitButton on Twitter and Instagram. And you can follow Robert at Robert F. Mackay on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Subscribe to BitButton on YouTube and make sure to turn on notifications. Finally, like I said at the top, if you love the show, you can support it at patreon.com slash BitButton. Stay wet, internet. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just say, <laughs> Yeah, I did. <laughs>